Good morning, welcome to West Monmouthshire. My first visit this year and I'm excited to play. So let's get out there and make some bogeys. Unless of course you were planning to shoot 65 today. No? Well, we're gonna make some bogeys then, aren't we? Right, here we go. Now I'm certain the members know exactly what line to take with their driver to get close to this short par 4. I don't. So it's just a 5 iron for, for me to get in a decent position. It seems a sensible way of avoiding a bogey. Two tiered green, flag is on the front. Going past this flag is a no-no. So it's just a gap wedge. As it happened, it finished just shy of the green, which is ideal. It's a good place to miss, because from here, although I've got to come up about 18 inches, 20 inches, it's a very simple chip and a putt. And we've avoided our first bogey. Right, this is par 71, so breaking 80 is 8 bogeys, 10 pars. Breaking 90 is 18 bogeys. Breaking 100 is a awful lot of bogeys and double bogeys and perhaps worse than that. So there's absolutely no need to get upset when we make a bogey, even if it's early in the round. Green is in a bowl, you can't see the surface of the green, but it does mean the sides gather the ball back to the green, which is a good job because this was most definitely offline and I've bounced off the right hand bank, good for me. Now if you want to avoid bogeys, lagging is a skill you're going to have to learn to get the touch and the feel to drop this inside four feet and if you've practiced your four footers and you actually put some effort into lining these things up then this should be a formality but we will miss one every now and then because that's life that's golf now i'm not saying don't care about your bogus if your iron misses this green and then you hit a poor chip and then a poor putt and you make a bogey, care about it. Care about it enough to go to the practice area and put it right. The first par five, par fives are what I call a rest hole. Simply because you can hit one or sometimes two slightly below average shots and then have a good third to make your par. If you're looking to break 80 though, and you've got four par fours on your course, not only should you be targeting these four par fours, I said I meant par fives, you should be targeting these par fives for one under gross. There should be one of them where you can hit a wedge in close enough to have a decent birdie chance. But uh, for the rest of us, they're a rest hole. No matter your handicap, you should be looking to get fives on these because they do allow you to make a mistake and still get a five. Now I say treat every short par four differently according to its difficulties and its hazards. So the first hole, I always go cautious because I'm not really that sure what the right direction is or even how far to hit it. This hole is 268. The wind is pushing behind us. It is immensely wide. It doesn't matter too much how far wide you are of the center of the fairway. So I can certainly hit driver. But what if I was uh, a higher handicap? Well, what would I do? Well, I've also said, trust your wedges so I'm gonna trust my wedges 268 downwind oh, I'm gonna try a six iron
there's no stress in that shot. Not even like I'm trying to hit a tiny green. I got acres of fairway to hit. How easy is that? 75 yards left, sand wedge. The green runs away from me, so there's probably no stopping this, even with a little sand wedge. But notice how I watch how the ball runs out after it's gone past the hole. Which is always worth doing, because it can give you information. Now sometimes you go for a putt, and other times you are looking to leave yourself a short uphill tap in. Bob Rotella says you should aim to hold every single putt. I disagree. I think sometimes you need to work on leaving yourself something uphill. Right, I haven't made a bogey yet. However, there's plenty of time. This fifth hole is what I'd call a bogey hole. The second shot is over water. If I drive it in the rough, then I'm certainly compromised on getting over the water. And if I'm not careful, then it's a double bogey. So there are bogey holes, and then you've got to try and play them well. If I go in the rough, I might have to play for a bogey to avoid a double bogey, if you see what I mean. Last down the middle. I'll show you a bogey in a minute. <laughs> well, we can still make a mess of it from here with a six iron, especially into the little breeze. Anything badly mishit is in the water, so we must take care to take enough club. I didn't catch it particularly well, or I misjudged the breeze, but either way, it's another one of those lag situations. got to get it inside that short distance so you can make a par. So only playing 126 today. Flag is front left and yet this is a bogey hole. See on every golf course there's going to be greens where they're going to prove a little bit beyond our pay grade. It's as simple as that. You and I do not hit the ball consistently enough to have the distance control to drop a tee shot under this hole and have an uphill putt. We're gonna be elsewhere on the green and we're gonna three putt because of the difficulty of the green. Without doing anything wrong, we can walk off this with a bogey. And you have to learn to accept that. You go to places like Rolls and Monmouth and the th the same thing's going to happen. You're going to be the wrong side of the flag and you're not going to be able to stop the ball by the hole. You're going to miss the next one back and it's a bogey. That's golf. Got to take it on the chin sometimes. me. I've just thrown a ball up the green so you can see what I mean. My only way of stopping this is to hit the hole. So you can make a bogey and it's not really your fault. It's still rolling. It's just stopped there. 5, 10, 15, 22 feet. So on a green like this, sometimes you can do nothing wrong and still walk off with a bogey. This is stroke index one. And I think I've only ever had one par on it. It doesn't help that you can't quite see where you're going. But I'd rarely get a good view of the green. This is just a seven iron. And to show the difficulty, I've never seen a bounce to the left as harsh as that. Oh. 
hard to imagine that was right of the flag but we can still avoid the bogey it's just a little flick up there with a chipping club the job isn't over yet we've got to finish this off number eight here I always take driver not only is it a huge amount of fun to hit driver down this hole and reaching the front edge and getting a chip and put birdie there's another reason too and that's in the fairway down here short where I'd leave myself for a pitching wedge there's humps and hollows and ridges and uh, any number of bad lies so I like to fly over them but the interest of science I've got my 175 yard club now there is a ditch across so if I don't catch this right I might be in it but let's trust my wedge to get me the par and avoid the double bogey of going out of bounds now you can make bogeys by being too cautious this is just my five iron and I can end up in a horrible position just by being too careful it looks like I've got away from it or way with it here on the camera but I haven't really because that was into an upslope and that didn't half jar my wrist so you can see by being too careful you can end up in a position where I might not have been able to hit the green fortunately I can put a bit So whilst taking driver is a big risk, sometimes not taking enough club is also a big risk. Number nine, the par five. I normally attack the corner, but I'm going to play a fair bit safer today. And there's certainly less stress involved by aiming further left and not taking on the out of bounds. Now I'm just going with a six iron from about 228 that seemed sensible and stress-free which just leaves a 60 odd yard flick with a sand wedge it's funny how much easier this hole plays when I'm not trying to get on in two I haven't had a take on the corner and I haven't had to take on the difficulty of hitting the green Right, the tenth. A par three, it's usually on that tee behind you at about 210 yards. As soon as you come to a par three that's got a two to start the number, it's going to be a bogey hole, isn't it? You're putting wood in your hand. It always makes me laugh when you see the pros on TV complaining that they've got to hit a three wood into a par three. Well, this tee box I'm on today is 191 yards. That means for Neville it's driver so I'd advise the overpaid pros to shut the hell up because us amateurs are hitting woods on par threes all the time <laughs> another par five another unsighted fairway but still a rest hole and a gorgeous drive I've hit that absolutely stonking but it's in the rough I couldn't tell that and it's a really bad lie so you've got to deal with the disappointment and play sensibly that was just an eight iron I don't think I could have hit any more than that and I didn't need to 
it's just left me a gap wedge to a front right flag. Now that is a bad shot. But you see what I mean about a par 5 where you can hit an average shot and still make a par 5? That drive, although I thought was gorgeous, wasn't. But with two reasonable irons and two reasonable putts, I've got my par. My first poor drive. Now this looks worse than it actually is. I can get on this quite easily. I can get it up easily. Although the follow through thumps into the bank. But it is short. And then we need some imagination. I got a 9 iron. I'm going to hit it into the face of the step of the green. Kill the speed. And it will bounce on up. perfect. Now all I've got to do is hold the putt. This is longer than it looks on the screen. Finally a bogey. Finally what this video is all about. The next par 5. Now the fairway is offset to the right from this tee box so I've got to get it out the right and I've kind of overdone it. So again, it's a dealing with your disappointment. There's a ditch over the fairway that I don't want to go in. I don't want to reach it, so this is just a seven. And the seven leaves me a perfect wedge. See, you don't have to be aggressive on par fives to get your par 5. It's three shots and you can use any three clubs in the bag to execute them. You know, it doesn't matter what your handicap is, what your standard is, or even what score you are on. Us golfers love to get negative about things, don't we? We like to foul up, get negative about it, and it's, oh no, here we go again. You're on a good score, now you're messing it up, and you'll mess up the next hole, and you'll mess up the next hole. And there's almost a sigh of relief when we do because at least then we've done what we predicted that we were going to do and that is foul up your score. I haven't got any time for that. I've got five holes to play. I've got a driver swing to try and fix on this tee box. Let's do it. There is absolutely no reason why I should hit two more bad drives and threaten a couple of bogeys, is there? Well that's short, so we get one of those Bob Rotella moments where he says you must aim to hold every putt. Well from here all I want is an uphill tap in. So I'm not aiming to hold this at all. This is what I want. This is where my par is. Going for the hole. I wouldn't have finished there. 15, another bogey hole, another very difficult hole. It is so difficult to find this green. That drive is slaughtered. 
So that fix it. Just a gap wedge in. I'm playing this right of the flag. And this is an even bigger bounce to the left. I don't know how it's finished down here. Now the camera has just fallen over twice because of the slope here. So I was thinking about the camera behind me, not the shot in front of me. So it doesn't surprise me that I shanked it or hit it poorly in some other manner. And with my head scrambled, we've got ourselves a double. Now we go off to 16, 240 yards, three hybrid, enjoy. <laughs> yeah, baby. Well, this is definitely a bogey hole but maybe not today. What can I say? About bloody time. You know, some bogeys come out of the blue. I've got the wind wrong. I'm taking a nine iron from 140 downhill and I hit it as sweet as a nut, but it's a good 10 yards short. And we're going to do this. We're going to make mistakes. It's how you deal with those mistakes. Do you carry the mistake to the next tee or not? Does it take you two or three holes to get over the fact that you've just messed up a short par three? No, you've got to go to the next tee fresh. Concentrate and hit a decent shot. This last one is a bogey hole as well, especially as I've just driven it down the bomb hole. Priority now is just getting back up there, really. Grateful I've still got a ball. Grateful I've not crossed the fence and out of bounds. And sometimes you just can't avoid a bogey. But if you can take a bogey, then you might not end up with a double bogey. You know, sometimes golf doesn't go how you plan it and videos do not go how they plan it. Let's go out and make some bogeys. Ta-ra.